Hi everybody, my name is Connor McDonald. This is how you get in touch with me via Twitter, and this is my blog. I'm one of the developer advocates inside Oracle, trying to make your life more productive and successful as a developer. This is the next of the KISS series of videos, keeping it simple with SQL, focusing on partitioning. These are short two minute sessions with a strong developer focus because partitioning is often seen as the realm of the DBAs. In this session, we'll finish off interval partitioning with the last few idiosyncrasies you need to be aware of. First, a quick recap on basic range partitioning. Here's our sales table we saw in the very first video in this series. You can see it's got a fixed set of partitions P01 to P13, and of course we can view that from the user tab partitions database dictionary view. You can see that at P13 goes up to 2011, and as we'd expect, if we try and insert a row past 2011, in this case 2013, we get the familiar error, inserted partition key does not map to a partition. Before interval partitioning, sometimes people would use an insurance policy to ensure that never occurred. What you can do with the basic range partition table is use a special keyword called max value. In this case on line 25 we got partition pmax values less than max value. That's a magical value or special value that says any value that exceeds the last partition which has a normal timestamp value or any range upper bound will go into the max value partition including nulls if necessary. So what we can see there is now even though I have partitions only defined up to 2011 the presence of a max value partition lets me happily insert the value 2013 into our sales table. But there's one key issue to be aware of. If you have a partitions table with a max value clause, if you want to then convert it to an interval partition table, you will not be able to. And this makes sense because that max value partition could contain data for a whole range of potential intervals. You will need to move the data out of that max value partition and then drop that max value partition before you convert it to an interval partition table. So just be careful with max value. The second thing we need to be aware of with interval partitions is partition limits. For all partitioning systems inside the Oracle database, we have a limit of just over 1 million partitions. That's 2 to the power of 20 minus 1 there. Now you might be thinking, I'll never ever get that many partitions and there's probably all sorts of issues with that many partitions anyway. But let's see how it could happen with interval partitionings when you might not expect it. Here is a table called million par. It's partitioned by range on an integer and the interval is one. As you can see there, the table is totally empty. I haven't put any rows in it yet. It's simply got one partition defined, values less than one, and the interval is one. Let's now try insert this value. Insert into million par values two million. I'll actually get an error. Or a 14300, we're mapping to a partition number that's outside the maximum number. That might seem strange because we don't have any rows in the table yet. How can we have 2 million partitions? What is happening here is because the interval size is 1, inserting the value 2 million would be the theoretical 2 millionth partition, which is above the amount of legal partitions allowed. That's why you need to be careful when choosing your interval sizes to make sure you're not going to end up with a ridiculous number of partitions. You can run these scripts yourself by using the live SQL link in the description of the YouTube video. That pretty much covers off the basics of our partitioning structures, range, list, hash, composite, and interval. In the next session, we're gonna get onto the concept of querying partition tables, a whole new topic. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you all again soon on the KISS principle, keeping it simple with SQL.